Welcome to Live Darts TV. We've got a very special guest. We're on location in Southampton and we're joined by Andy Hamilton. Andy, Hi. thanks for joining us. No, no problem. Nice to see you. I say, great year today in the BDO for yourself. Final of the World Champion, two quarter finals of other ranking events. Must be over the moon with the way it's gone so far. Yeah, bro, Steph, uh, coming to the BDO this year. I, I wasn't uh, blindfolded or like that. Just trying to get my confidence back, winning back, and obviously BDO giving me that chance. And now I'm loving the game again and can't wait for the next, well, the future. Was it, a, was it a hard transition, obviously, coming from the PDC, which is almost like perfect in what you do staging-wise, behind-the-scenes-wise, to the BDO events, which I'm not being disrespectful. Some of them are slightly chaotic at times. Was that a hard transition? Yeah, most definitely. I remember the first one I went to, the Scottish Open. There's 64 boards out there, but there's 900 people. And obviously the boards are so close together, so they're quite intimate, they're too close together sometimes. It's just so I've had to learn to get used to, and obviously it's only taken me probably the last three or four months where I can, I'm, I'm jelling into getting used to that now. So if I went back to the PDC, I'd just realised how spoiled we were over there and how, how professional the game was. I said sitting 34 in the wild at the moment, the lakeside, if it is, I know we're still waiting for an announcement, but is in touching distance. Was that a dream or did you realistically think you could make it in the first year? No, my first, my first uh, attitude was I'll come in to play darts and just to try to get my confidence back and win a few games and just take it step by step. But after the last couple of months I've had good results and put me on that edge where I could be on the lakeside but it isn't the be all and end all for me but I'd love to get there as a kid I watch it all my life so I've been brought up and watching the lakeside so to go there and play there it'd be, it would be a dream come true to me. I was going to say sells you this weekend as well lots of ranking points available this weekend so fingers crossed for a good weekend. Yeah most definitely I'm going, I'm going to weekend with a great form my confidence is high um, I'm focused now, more concentrated, and obviously go, I can go forward with this with the game yeah, now. And obviously next year I'll go Q scrolling at my tour card. I say you've, you've touched on it there. Um, the BDO announcement has completely opened it all up again. As a player, are you happy the announcement's there that we're almost bringing darts back into one again, or trying to at least? Yeah, I think the game should be. Every dart player will tell you. Every, every dart player will just want to play darts or have the opportunity to play darts. Why, why uh, ban people to play darts when it's not their fault? It's just the organisation don't come to agreement. I think this, this now for the BDO is a great step forward to coincide with the PDC and they can work together now for the future, hopefully. I say, we'll take you all the way back. First started playing PDC darts in 2004. Yeah. Can you still remember your first tournament you took part in? Yeah, very much so. It was a UK Open. Uh, I played someone called Eddie Lovely yeah. and I got beat. Remember it very well, but uh, it's, uh, that's in the, in the past. I say, your, your best year to date at PDC was 2012, World Finals and the Semi Final of the Premier League. Take us back to that world final, from winning the semi-final where you looked dead and buried against Simon Whitlock, was that, I guess you didn't get any sleep that night because you went up on a high and then down to a low, then trying to sleep must have been chaos. Yeah, it was very hard for me, obviously the 2012 the World Champions and then I was in the final. I think the whole week take took its toll on me, I'm diabetic so energy levels were messed up so having not much sleep up from the semi-finals to the final probably took its toll on me, it's probably one of the reasons I lost that final but I only had one chance and I lost it so trying to get back there again and have another bash at it. I was going to say, you, you touched on the final or the semi-final there. When you were behind, you'd almost like, oh, I'm just going to let me go now and see what happens from 5-3 down. Yeah, sometimes you don't think you're going to lose. You sometimes think you've still got a chance. If you can just, just relax and enjoy the game now, and that's what happens a lot of times. I'm, I remember playing Simon at the Blackpool, I was 15-8 down in the same circumstances. I just relax and every leg kept rolling off and rolling off and come to a certain point where you think you can win it again. I never thought I was going to lose, but I never thought I was going to win, so I was in that yeah. dilemma in the middle there. From getting to the world final, you obviously got a wild card into the Premier League. Did you find out the same as we all did when Barry announced them, or did you get told prior to the announcement that you got I, one? Yeah, I got to, for the Premier League, I got told probably a week before the Premier League, just get me ready for the Premier League. So it was just an amazing, amazing experience. I think anybody who wants to play darts wants to play in that Premier League stage without a doubt. You said you touched on the amazing experience there. What is it like? Because look, watching it from <coughs> the outside looking at it, it just looks like an absolute whirlwind of a 16 weeks where you don't know whether you're coming or going. Oh, it's really that. I mean, if you play with darts one week, the next, next thing you know, you travel to someone else the week after. But it's just just an amazing experience. And if anybody was to say you can't, don't like it or doesn't want to be on that front of 10,000 people, it'd be silly. It's just one of them great amazements I could take to my take to my grave. Did you have a favourite Premier League venue? Uh, I think one of the best ones is probably Manchester. I played Phil Taylor, Mary Taylor, and I beat him. So them memories will always stay with when you beat Phil Taylor. I suppose you've got to break the Premier League down as well. It's like first eight weeks not get relegated, then the next um, seven weeks is like right, can I get into that top four? Yeah, it's all about putting in the right position. I mean, I think I was next to bottom all the way through the Premier League, near enough. But I think it was so close to that Premier League that year where everyone was in touching distance. 
And I think the last game I had to beat Kev Payne to a certain amount of legs to another one. And I won it that just that that same amount of legs. I won't say that coming to the semi-finals, but it got me third place. So that means I played Simon and, and I the final was a great game against Simon. He had to to nine darts to beat me as well in that final, so semi-final. So a lot, a lot of good, good, good thoughts through that game. Obviously, from there, it didn't go quite as well. The, the slide started to happen down the rankings. Subconsciously, did you, did you know the slide was happening to yourself, or were you in this bubble where you just thought, I'm going to play through this bad spell? No, not at all. I knew I was, I knew I was dropping off. I had personal problems and issues with me, medical things that I had to get sorted out. And that's one of the reasons I had a year out this year, just to get medical things sorted out. The new glasses, I had all eye operations, so I had sciatica, I've had inject injections for. So I want to get myself right before I can have a new batch. And also, I wanted that spiral to stop some. Uh, if I'd have gone Q school, I might not have got a tour card, so I'd have been getting further, further down where now I've just picked myself back up. I'm not up to be echelons where I want to be, but I'm, I'm, I'm progressing slowly but surely. Well, see, 2014 was a massive blow when you lost the second round when you were defending the final money, which, as we've seen with Adrian Lewis this year, it's just a massive hit when something like that happens to your ranking. Yeah. Would you like to see maybe a one-year rolling cycle instead of a two, so you know where you are a little bit more? Yeah, I think, I think so. I think the video works as a year only one for TV event, so at least you can judge it better. So like I say, you can have a, you can have two great years on that one event. You can crash straight out of top 16 in one go, and it hurts you so bad you just don't realise how much it hurts until you've dropped too far away. When did you actually make the decision that you weren't going to go to Q School? Was <coughs> it one that you'd made a long way before the Worlds, or was it one that watching the Worlds you decided there and then, well, I'm not going to go? No, I made a decision a few months before the Worlds, and as I was thinking about it earlier on in the year because I got offered to do an exhibition in Australia in the January, so I thought to myself. Do we go off some time away from the game, enjoy darts again and relax and <coughs> do the ex uh, exhibition side? And I was talking to the girlfriend and she says, yeah, just, just go. It's not safe to step back, it's just stopping that fall. So I'll have to stop the fall and, and progress, I'll try to get back up there again. But while I was away in Australia, I really started enjoying the game again and obviously playing fellow pros. I played Kyle Anderson, Phil Taylor, so it just knows I've still got the game. And I know I've still got the game now because it's coming back to me now gradually again. Was that a hard decision? to come to terms with it, hang on a minute, I need to step away to maybe go forward again. Definitely, ma massive decision for me. Took me a long time to decide how to stop and stop this spiral going down just so I can make my way back up again. So, hard decision, but I can think about now and say it's the right decision. Well, so you've been around the game a long time as well. Did you speak to some of your fellow pros that you've been around with for a long time as well? Was it just you and your family that made the decision? Yeah, ju just me and the family. Other pros, well, I know what they say to me, Andy, just battle through, but sometimes it's easier said than done. So I've made the decision hard for myself. To, I love this game so much. I had to change something to make it better again, and that, that's what I did. Obviously, the BDO flexibility, was that one of the main reasons you decided to give it a go? Because you don't have to enter everything like you do the PDT to keep your ranking. You can just pick and choose where you want to go. Was that a deciding factor? Yeah, of course. That's what it's all about. You don't have to do all the events. Like I said, I didn't go to this event to have any, any expectations of winning the league side or getting into the league side or doing really good. I want to get my confidence back, but once you get that confidence back, you want to win more and more. So I'm getting that bit between my teeth again, what I had before. I'm not showing the aggression again, which I want, I need in my game. So it's just all about looking forward now to the future of my game. You touched on the inside. Are you going to go to Q School in January? Yeah, most definitely up there in Q School. I have another bash at Tour Card. I won't get a Tour Card again. I won't play the PDC again, and I won't compete again. Do you believe you can get back to in that top ten in the world where you were for so long? Uh, maybe, maybe not. I'm, I think the form's coming good now, and you get the consistency together, so it's about more practice. Uh, maybe not get back to where I was, but I want to give that fighting chance. I think I can be. Many dark players obviously tweak their throws, equipment. Have you done much of that whilst you've been away trying to find perfection with your throw and with your darts and your setup? I think what's happened then also before when I lose me lose me confidence, I think I started ch not change, but just without knowing my stance changed, so I started getting enclosed in yourself, so I wasn't opening up. So now it's coming gradually where I'm opening my body up again now. So my arms really fully f fully extended and my me, me back foot's right back, so I'm fully extended playing darts and now I'm playing with probably a bit more pride and confidence in myself. Best case scenario, you go to, um, well, I'm guessing it's Wigan, because it normally is, and win your tour card. Worst case, would you then do the Challenge Tour and try and win your tour card that way? Because the way the Challenge Tour is going now, people can earn a very good living from that. Yeah, of course, if that's, that's, that's the next option as well from the tour card, go to the Challenge Tour, then obviously I can still do media events with the Challenge Tour. I can mix them both together now this band's been lifted, so whatever, whatever comes, I'll, I'll, have, I'll, I'll have a good bash at either one or the other. Again, I touched on it earlier, you've been around the circuit a long, long time. Did you ever see darts going the way it has done where we've got two strong PDC tours, which have got the BDO with some very good players and that. Darts is in a very good place right now. Oh, without a doubt, games, the game with darts just don't, it's just blown out of the water. No one expected the game to be where it is now, and obviously thanks to Barrieri who's led the forces to, to this position, and uh, 
I think every dart player now is so proud of the PDC and what they've done for the game. So it's just just a way forward, and also it's getting bigger and better all the time. Away from darts, have you enjoyed the, the the break from it, where that relentless travel, where you can spend more time with the family? Because we talked to a lot of players, and family time is massively important. Have you enjoyed that aspect of it? I have, yeah. But uh, but the PDO side, there's more there's, there's more travelling clubs, there's more more trips abroad to Sweden, to Denmark, to Belgium, to Germany. So we're travelling a lot more overall, really, in a way. So I haven't really thought about the step away from having more family time. It's just 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 a piece of just for darts. You said uh, it's a sport you love. Have you still followed the PDC tour relentlessly, seeing who's done what since you've been away from it? Yeah, of course. I still love the darts, and I still love. I still want to be there. That's why I keep looking. I'm anxious to watch the game. I've watched all the TV games. I watch them all on TV because I know I've been there, and I still want to get back there again. The World Series as well has taken off. Um, Barry's hinted there's going to be another event. We're now seeing record crowds in America, Australia, Asia, China. Would you like to be part of that again one day as well? Oh, most definitely. I was, I was privileged to be a part of that well, one time, but it wasn't as big as it is now. The Wheel Series. I got to go to Singapore, obviously uh, Dubai. Uh, it's just a great place to go, and obviously now it's getting bigger and better. I'd, you have to have aspirations. I've got one of my aspirations to be back where I want to be again. I want to be in that top ten where I can get there, but I'm not sure I can. But I've got that fight and ability to get there. Away from darts, how does how does Andy Hammond relax? What do you like to do when you've got the darts are in the cupboard? I don't want to see him for a while. What do you go and do? Yeah, well, obviously now we're back at home. I'm in Stoke on Trent. My brother's got a little bake shop there, so the famous thing in Staffordshire's oat cakes. Yeah. So we're down there a few days a week helping him out. So it gets running. Obviously, with my name, I don't want to brag about it, but my name goes a long way in the community where we are, and we get a lot of, lot of trade from it as well. So it's all about helping my brother out and helps me relax, it makes me brain active, and also I'm not lazy all the time. And obviously, I practice. Then you touched on there about brain being lazy and that maybe going back to doing a, a job part time does that refocus your mind as well? Hang on a minute, I don't want to do this. I want to be up there practicing. Oh, most definitely, it's hard work. I'm up at five o'clock in the morning, making oak cakes. So, so help me brother out. So I want to get back at darts. Darts is money to be made, and also it's my passion to get back there again. I love darts more than I love work, but I don't mind work. I'm a, I'm a worker by trade, so I've done it in my life before. I'd do it again, but darts is my future. Also, well, I'm going to talk to you about the both world championships coming up. Obviously, Glenn stayed with the BDO. Is he favourite for Lakeside again this year? Do you think? Well, he's got to be. It's two, two, two times running, he's won it, so he's got to be favourite again. But there's people who are there who can beat him, but I think sometimes when you get in a position where you keep winning all the time and people keep losing all the time, you get in that stalemate where you think I can't beat him. But I'm in a different position at the moment because I don't fear anybody really. But I just got to get Lakeside feared before I can even look at winning a game there. That's when you touch on that. Where you've played the very best in the PDC. You've got maybe a different mentality to some of the big area lads that haven't played at that top level before. Yeah, most definitely. I think my experience will come in on stage where I, I probably play my best games on stage. It's like the BDO circuit, you're playing so many games so many games in a day, it's just it's mentally tiring, not not physically, it's mentally, it just wears out. And obviously the short format it kills you and all, but obviously TV, you prepare for one game, you give it your all, you give it your best, hundred percent, and you get the best results. And the PDC Worlds, Michael's obviously world number one and world number one by a long way. Will go to Ali Pali as overwhelming, overwhelming favourite. Do you think he can make it three world titles or do you think he may fall again like he did last year? I think he's got every chance to win another world championship. But also, there's people there who can beat him. Yeah, Gary Anderson and obviously Rob Cross and even Adrian Lucy for turns up. And there's a few other players out there who can do it. It's all about how you're feeling, it's how Michael goes into it. Sometimes he puts a lot of pressure on himself and thinks he should be winning them. Yeah, maybe you should, but sometimes relax a bit more and it'll come to you anyway if you're good enough. Touched on Gary Anderson as well, now, now joined the exclusive club of winning the PDC Triple Crown. Surely he now has to get Anderson Bob and Bray. Oh, without doubt. I think in my eyes, Gary's been a great to me. Anyhow, he's a great bloke, loves a game, great loser, great winner, <coughs> loves a game and just loves everybody who treats him, who respects Gary, you get respect back off him. Andy, absolute pleasure. Wish you all the very best luck at Sardis this weekend and hopefully we see you at Lakeside and good luck at Q's Thanks very much. Cheers, Phil. Thank you very much. Cheers, buddy.